one of the things that we talked about along the way was that the fantasy of this film is going to be based on Japanese folklore. Japanese mythology is so fascinating. It makes it otherworldly. It really lets us put a distinct, fantastic stamp on the film. When we started out to make this film, we wanted to put together a hunt unlike what you've seen before. It's like a born identity car chase, except with horses. The whole idea is this majestic beast that's been poisoned, it's gone rabid. There was a previous that was done back in LA, and it hasn't really changed. But the creature has changed a lot. This mythical beast, it's not really a Kieran. It was sort of our own creation, where we wanted to make something that could live in that world. So we said, we'll take the horns from an elk, and I want to take part of that and that and that, and we'll make our own. This is uh, <laughs> Kieran Hunt. And this sequence right here, the Kieran kind of runs through some people. It's a challenging shoot. It takes place on three locations, inside the woods, outside in a big open field, back in the woods, which was done at Great Windsor Park and Hatfield House, spread out over a few weeks. I'm from in Kazakhstan. My name is Dauren. Isn't it? This horse is from in Spain. We had a load of riders from Kazakhstan brought those over because there's not many riders in England with that look. We have the horses that we can put the actors on at gallop so we can do all the nice close-ups. But we can't have real horses running flat out and falling over. So we have mechanical horses. And roll. There's a lot of visual effects there because obviously the Kieran's not real. So it's all about designing a path where the Kieran will be, making sure that the actors are looking at where it will be, and making sure that there's real-world interaction with the invisible creature. <laughs> From a physical acting standpoint, it's just been exciting to be doing the rehearsals and go from the script version to its living aspect. It should be epic. The Oni is an ogre. The idea was that the Dutch had bought this Oni as a creature out of the woods and they used it as a fighting behemoth. Played the character of the Yoni. He's a vicious character. I heard they were casting for somebody really tall who would have to move well. I had an audition with Gary Powell and was pretty much offered the part there. Yeah, Neil is seven foot seven, a professional athlete. You know, he played basketball and he's got great command of his physical skills. I've never done CGI before. Basically, I was in a carrot suit for about a week, which was not a good time. <laughs> I wanted to get a suit that was more coloured the same as the Oni would be in the end, so that once we've overlaid him with our CG creature, the reflections he's giving off are the right colour. You know, to see this great body moving gracefully and doing the impossible, he's amazing. <laughs> My first reaction to the tank. What? <laughs> they are so scary. In Tengu, Kai takes Oishi to go and get some swords from the people he grew up with. And in Japanese myth, they're bird men. And Carl wanted them to be more men that had self mutilated themselves. Scars in the head, cutting off their own ears. Their eyes have grown large because they're in a cave for years and years. After numerous drawings, we gave those instructions to our team of prosthetic designers. We're making up one of the Tengu monks this morning. We start off with uh, hiding Andy's hair. We put a bald cap on him. We have two ear pieces so that have lost their ears. We have a, a large face piece, a little head piece which goes on, and several lip pieces which are basically scars. So we've got about nine pieces in total. We're just going to define a few areas with grease paint, give it a little bit more contrast. Biggest sequences. We're doing what we're calling the BAM. Go, go, go. 
so we had the storyboards and we turned that into a moving animatic. There's one shot which was a, a continuous figure of eight through everybody fighting. So that like, involved doing a lot of motion control because we need to repeat the same moves with Tengu in, Tengu out. That was a bit of a headache because the motion control rig has a massive arm on it that we had moved making sure we got the best possible take that we can then reinsert with the passes later on. Carl's brief has been to make it as frenetic, as weird and tripped out as possible. So it's been an exciting sequence to shoot. The witch is a Katsuni witch, which is a fox, which is a shapeshifter. She's sort of this seductive and taunting Lady Macbeth style character. And I will give you all you desire. Rinko Kikuchi is spectacular. I think she's sexy. I think she's duplicitous. She's kind of always scheming and playing. She has several powers. One of her main ones is that her dress is a creature. And we're trying to do that in an interesting way and clever camera tricks or clever reveals rather than seeing her blend from one character to the other. The final fight between Keanu and Rinko was intended to push the fantasy more instead of it just being a dragon that you see out of traditional movies. It's really more of a serpentine character, which is a Nure Ona, a serpent with the head of a woman. <laughs> When we set out to shoot that scene, we wanted to get as much in camera as we could of the fighting, and Keanu really helped bring an authenticity to it. And we have this massive epic battle. In the 47 Ronin, we took inspiration from a whole menagerie of fantastical creatures. And we tried to see them through the lens of a Western audience. Good night.